But it isn't perfect, it's what it is. But it doesn't mean that you have to be. We've lost friends. We've lost money. Might have even lost family. Now, we have better opportunities than ever before. Reinvent yourself, grow your personal brand, connect to many, many more. Go from a million to a billion. Find your voice, become an industry icon and make success. Your choice. Dave Crane, nice to see you. I hope you've missed me as much as I've missed you. And if you haven't missed me at all, I hope you miss me more if I suddenly disappear. Not that I'm going to get, you know, arrested or anything like that. I'll be here. I'm just trying to make the greetings sound like it matters that I care, because I do care. And I think you care because you're here. And if you don't care, then pfft, welcome to Speak on Stage. My name is Dave Crane, as you can see, with a label that should be around about there. Is that, can you, can you see? It's me? Yes? No? Don't answer that. Uh, and the show is all about how to brand yourself and use public speaking and the use of video and uh, audio to get your marketing to a really high level. So you become a really good personal brand that people want to do business with. Uh, we go out live uh, whenever we broadcast to LinkedIn, to YouTube, to Twitch. I have no idea what Twitch is, but we go there. Um, Periscope, um, Twitter. We don't go to Instagram. Instagram is problematic. I'm not saying Instagram as itself is problematic because I get sued, but Instagram is really hard to broadcast to because they, they have this wall all the way around. So I can broadcast to lots of different places, but Instagram is like when you go around somebody's house and you go, hi, come have a coffee. I'm going to say, great, well, take your shoes off. Say, okay, well, I'll take my shoes off. There you go, you take your shoes off. And you say, right, where are we going to sit? No, 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 no. Before you do that, uh, I want you to wipe your feet. So well, wipe my feet. I've just already taken my shoes off. Why am I wiping my feet? You think I've been walking around in mud in bare feet? Just wipe your feet. Okay, I'll wipe my feet. And you go like that and you scuff them on that, that spiky mat that they have. And you go, ow, 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 ow. Okay, they're nice and clean. Got all the corns off it and, and corn and, and, and peas and, and, and carrots or whatever might have been on the bottom of your feet. They say, right, okay, can I come in now? I say, you can come in, but put those socks on first. Socks? Why am I wearing socks? It's your house, it's not anything like ridiculously clean. I'm sure it's not anyway. Put the socks on. And you've got to put on those socks. Okay, you know when you go to, um, you know when you go bowling and they've got those horrible thin socks that you've got to pay for and you've got to wear and they're like really thin, like like a, like a, like a mask that you've got to wear. And you've got to put, so you put the, the socks on and they say, okay, right, can we get the coffee now? Say, so right, just stand in the corner first. I'm going to hose you down just to make sure you're clean and sanitized. <laughs> And that's what happens when I go around to a neighbor's house now because they take, um, they take uh, staying at home very, very seriously. No, that's not true at all. But anyway, that's kind of what's like trying to broadcast uh, into IGTV, which of course is Instagram. And that's why I just don't at this moment in time. But I might do in the future, but I'm not now. So there. So today, as always, is about ways of making money. I want to share with you a load of different really interesting things, which I think you'll find as exciting as I do. My background is very much in radio, so we are be talking about podcasting. But rather than start you off as being a podcast get, um, starting your own podcast, we will talk about doing your own talk show, your own um, TV show, your own podcast, all that stuff. But we're going to start off by talking to you about, in my opinion, the easiest way to start your brand going once you've got a decent brand online, and that is to get on as a guest to people who already got podcasts. Now, podcasts are all over the place. Tons of people have them. They're like CB, like Citizens Band Radio. Except they're not like Citizens Band. In fact, you probably you don't know what Citizens Band Radio is, CB. You've never seen Convoy, have you? You've got no idea who Chris Christopherson is. You don't even know that he was Whistler and Blade. No, you don't, no idea. But anyway, talking about that, not talking about Whistler and Blade, um, CB Radio was a setup that used to exist. I think it started with truckers in America who would be on a rig in their rig. So their rig was a truck, but their rig was a... Their, not Rick, who's the know who Rick is. Maybe one of them was called Rick. But, but their rig was their setup for doing CB Radio. So they'd basically have the, the ability to go, hello, Breaker Breaker, uh, no, Breaker Breaker, that was it. Breaker Breaker, and they go, ding, ding, ding. They weren't on a tram. Anyway, they would get the get this thing, we're talking to it like like police do. You know, we're talking into it over, and you do that. 
And uh, of course, if you're a trucker and you're falling asleep and you want to find out what's going on on the roads, it makes perfect sense to be able to do that. But then it caught on in the UK and lots of other places. So people on the night time would start talking, would talk late nights and chat to various other people. And my friend John used to have one. And uh, citizen band was illegal in those days because the, the frequencies you'd use would interfere with taxis, would complain, and often with police cars, like, they'd just keep the frequencies clear so if you could go and catch baddies or goodies or... or... You always had me say something then, but I didn't. Catch people of colour. Not all of them. That was a joke, it's not funny. Okay, so what would happen in those days was uh, they'd basically take all your gear off you. They wouldn't normally, normally arrest you if you were very small, uh, but they'd take your gear off you. And so you, there's a cat and mouse thing going on all the time with the police if you're going to do CB. And so you had to use a different name, you couldn't call yourself anything. My friend John used to call himself Men in Black. Man in Black, uh, which was very cool. I think it was took it from, um, from um, what's he called, the Johnny Cash. Uh, but the problem is Man in Black could be a name for the police, so people were never sure if it was a policeman on the line or it was a real person on the line, apart from he had a, he was a teenager, so he had a young man's voice, like, hello, how are you? Kind of thing. Um, and he always used to talk to his friend, Little Imp, he used to drive a Little Imp, so, you know, it was exactly why I got the name. And I used to hang around, and I'd sit there, and he'd go, <sighs> and he could hardly hear what people were saying, because the frequency was rubbish. Um, and also, if he had a big uh, um, antenna, on your house so you could get a better frequency, the police could spot it, come round and take it off you and throw it all in the bin. Or maybe they'd sell it back to you for Christmas or something like that. So it was all very discreet how he did it. And so I'd sit there and I'd listen to my friend Man in Black talking to Little Imp and I'd get bored, it's boring. Cause it was your friends talking about stuff. So where are you? I'm on the other side of your house. Really, what are you doing there? I'm in my car driving around. Well, you've got, you see me in your car, yeah. What about the antenna? It's massive, the car's gonna fall over. So those are kind of rubbish conversations that they were having. And to be honest with you, when you're a teenager, you get very excited about stuff like that in those days. So years before that, teenagers had a completely different experience. Years before that, kids would get excited by somebody giving them a hula hoop or a hula hoop and a stick. Or maybe a football. They go, hoo hoo, I've got a ball, I'm king of the world. Nowadays, iPads, phones, and more apps than you can you can blink at. That's what kids need all the time. It's true. So with that, um, that was how I got my interest kind of in radio. I was always interested in recording and so on. <sighs> Where's this going? Right, I'll tell you exactly where this is going. This is going to the whole point about what you need to do to grow your brand very effectively. The podcast world has exploded. There's about a billion podcasters, I believe, being done, at least there's a billion dollars, maybe two, three billion dollars in potential advertising from the industry of podcasting. Now there's certain stars in it, Joe Rogan will be sharing with you some of the biggest podcasts. We'll be telling you the best way to kind of get started and also telling you how to become a guest, a sought after guest on people's podcasts from people who actually have podcasts. So why would you want to become a guest on somebody's podcast? I think you'd want to become a guest very simply because of the fact that um, it's the fastest way to get your name known around other people. And if you're a guest on somebody's show and they've got a big show, then all those other people who are listening to the show will follow you on your social media. So if you're doing the rounds of everything, you end up cross-pollinating streams. You bring your friends to them, so they like that, and you get their fans and friends and followers to come to you. So it really works. And because it's generally non-commercial, people do it just for fun or to build their brand or because they've got a particular interest in something. And I think that's really cool. So we'll be sharing with you the strategy of how to become a guest on podcasts. Not necessarily how to start your own podcast, but hopefully that will be a kind of spin-off as a direct result of that. Now, one of the things you may or may not know is I do a thing called the Toilet Paper Diaries with my dear friend Ernesto Verdugo who's based in Houston, Texas. And when we went into lockdown for the very first time, because I'm based in Dubai, as you can see behind me, or at least it looks like uh, something from Star Wars, but Dubai looks like that sometimes. Um, we went into lockdown and we decided to do a TV show, which turned into a podcast, because we got the audio feed and made it into a podcast. The Toilet Paper Diaries, because at the time, there was uh, fighting over toilet paper, not in not, not between me and Ernesto, but just in shops, it was a thing. People thought we're gonna get invaded by aliens in the lockdown, and so I need to have lots of toilet paper. So people were fighting over, just Google it. So we created the show, turned it into a podcast, 
um, and we've got tons of really cool guests on it. And so it can be done. I'm going to show you all about that soon, in case you're interested in how you can start yours. Uh, and we broadcast every Wednesday uh, live, and you can catch them on wherever you're watching me right now. You can catch our show going out in the evening of that. So right now, is the, it's, it's mid-morning um, on a, what is it today? It's a Tuesday. I'd had to look at my watch. I have no idea. Lockdown's a blur. It could be Christmas. Don't tell me it's not. It could be. Um, so we start this show and we're already at about 70 something episodes. We did it daily all the way through, but it grew and it started mushrooming and uh, snowballing and uh, other things that you'd have as a drink at Christmas. And really it took off. And so it's easy to do. It's slow, and at first you look like uh, only one person's paying attention to it. But when you get the hang of it and you get your niche, it's much easier. So I'm going to let you chill out. We've got loads of stuff to share, loads of ways to become a podcasting guest, how you can start getting yourself around there and all those different things, plus the etiquette of what you must do when you get onto somebody's show so you don't end up blowing the whole thing and you get invited back again and have other people wanting to use you and get you on their show. This is Cheers from uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, most powerful person in the universe, uh, uh, probably apart from my friend John's mate, Little Imp. Um, well, not really. Speak on stage. The Toilet Paper Diaries was created by Dave Crane and Ernesto Verdugo, two international keynote speakers who saw the world go into lockdown because of a coronavirus and realized that many, many people would be scared. Not just speakers or event organizers, but anybody who owned their own business and was wondering what they need to do next to make sure that they could look after their families and still earn money. For 50 days consecutively without missing a single show, Dave and Ernesto shared ideas and tips and tools and techniques. They had a lot of fun, had a lot of jokes, and brought in some of the biggest speakers from the industry to join in. Hey Dave, hey Ernesto. Hello Dave and Ernesto. This is Michael Dieterich coming to you live from the Netherlands. This is Ethna Trainer in Dubai. Thanks for inviting me back. I get to see my reflection. Hi Dave. Hi, Ernesto. John Briggs here with another brief bulletin for you. Hope you guys are staying well. And congratulations on 50 amazing episodes. They're sharing great content from thought leaders, speakers, and authors around the globe. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, be able to deliver this message to you today. This is exactly the kind of content people really need. And thank you both so much for the daily dose of positivity that you are sharing with the world. Congratulations. For organizing this Celebration 50. What a fabulous accomplishment. What an incredible show. Thank you for adding value for all of us. Well done. Congratulations on 50 shows. That's, uh, that's impressive. Congratulations. You guys are doing fantastic work. And you do it in such a humorous way. Make sure you keep doing what you're doing. It's very, very important. Congratulations to your 50th episode. Kudos on the show. So proud of you. I've been a fan for a long time. Congratulations on the success of your show. What a great idea. Really nice to see you guys. The last time I seen you guys, it was five years ago in speaking in Dubai. I miss you guys. I remember all the great times we had working with businesses in the UAE and Bahrain. Just keep blessing people and keep sharing your gift. And stay safe and uh, I'll see you around the quad. Thank you all you've been doing. It's been great watching these reports from all over the world. And thank you both for all that you're doing. This is amazing stuff giving back during this tough, tough time. You look fantastic. And now, and people are starting to come out of their homes, now it's time to fast forward. Are you ready for the Toilet Paper Diaries, season two? So there you go, that's the story behind how we did the Toilet Paper Diaries, and you can catch us every Wednesday live 
um, depending whether you're in Houston or you're in Dubai. Uh, Dubai, I normally broadcast around about nine o'clock in the evening, so I look a little bit rough, but I look rough all the time, so it's perfect. Double trouble. For anybody else who's wondering how to start your own podcast, we'll be doing that in a future episode, but what we want to talk about is how it becomes, you can position yourself as an industry icon. That ability to reach people and have a huge impact is really the, the secret sauce to having your brand be effective uh, in this very strange digital age and it's it's strange because we weren't expecting a lockdown or quarantine or coronavirus or the other things that happened in the most horrible weird 2020 but there are opportunities based on the fact that if you have a brand or you don't mind creating one now is the best time ever because people are at home they are online and they do want to know what you can do for them so that's kind of key as well so uh, as always you get an opportunity to do something really special i want to share with you uh, very quickly what you need to be able to do do to uh, grow your brand and I'm going to share with you a special free gift you can have as a result of just being on this show. So then, let me share with you as a free gift that you can have. You can do a survey to position yourself and find out whether you are positioned as a, a very strong personal brand. All you have to do is go to speakonstage.com, which is my website. Um, and have a look there. See big fellas over there. Hi, how are you? See? Is that you're paying attention? Down here! I can see up your nose! That moustache looks really weird on one side, and the other side is different. No, he's, he's not paying any attention. But anyway, the point is that you go to that website, and if you can see just above me on this side here, there you go. Can you see where it's got the industry icon button? That gold button. Press that, and you go to another page. And when you scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, you get to see this. And this is, uh, this is a video all about industry icon, but also you can see here a green button. You see that? Take the free survey. When you click on that, you can take the free survey that is, it takes about 10 minutes, but it helps you understand how your brand exists. And it helps you understand what you need to Excuse me. Ooh, coffee, tea. What you need to do to be able to position yourself so people will find you, do business with you, and they'll instantly know what it is that you offer them. If you don't do that, you become invisible. And remember, right now, it's really important to be seen by people because they have so much choice. It's not about location anymore when you're online. It's literally like who comes up, who can do the job that I want them to do, and uh, are they trustworthy? That's what you want to be aiming at. So when you do the industry icon uh, survey, then check your email. We'll send you details straight away. Uh, and if you'd like to connect with me, then you get the option of setting up a 10-minute uh, conversation with me to look at your brand and see how we can facilitate and make it better. And amongst the things that we can do, starting your own podcast, starting your own TV show, doing your own blog, um, website, um, how to think differently so you become really well-known by the people uh, in your industry as a thought leader and high achiever, um, how to do lots of stuff with social media posts that really position you. This includes writing a book, and it also means networking. There's a load of different strategies that really allow you to be seen by people as the go-to in your industry, because if you're not seen as a go-to, all you do is leave yourself wide open for somebody else to take it, and nobody wants to be in that position, so that's why we do it. Does that make sense? Go to speak on stage, press the buttons, blah, blah, then the button, blah, 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 and then the other button, blah, 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 and uh, next up, let's look at podcasts. have gone from mainly a niche market to mainstream. There's a world of info and entertainment for people of all interests. So listen up, we have Podcast 101 on the lowdown. There are over half a million podcasts in existence, but that doesn't mean we all know what they are. A podcast is simply a piece of audio, a story or an interview or a documentary series that you can download and listen to whenever you want. Chris Bannon, Chief Content Officer at Stitcher, a podcast app, is here with a lesson on podcasts. First, where did they come from? Podcasting has been around for more than a decade, but I would say that it became really, really popular. It exploded in 2014 with the publication of a series called Serial. I definitely understand that someone could look at this and say, oh man, you know, he must be lying. It's so coincidental. And since then, there's now something for everyone, from shows about true crime to news. From the New York Times, I'm Michael Barbaro. This is The Daily. 
and from comedy to fantasy. What's this one's name? Logan. But he goes by another name as well. Wolverine. Today, as many as 100 million people are listening each month to the 18.5 million available episodes from the 700,000 podcasts out there. But unlike AM, FM radio, podcasts play through apps. So here's how to tune in. Stitcher has built the first widely available Android app. So Apple has an app that's built into the iPhone. Spotify is getting into the podcasting business in a big way. You can listen on your smart device through the app or on a computer from the website. If you click that little subscribe button, it will make sure to feed you new episodes of the show. Which leads us to the third part of the lesson. What are some of today's fan favorites? Right now, I think there's never been more variety in what's popular in podcasting. Dirty John uh, is a series that came out a couple of years ago. Whether to intimidate people or to impress them with his dark glamour, he bragged frequently about his underworld ties. This true crime podcast is also a hit series on Bravo. I'm John. <laughs> People like Conan O'Brien, the TV talk show host and comedian, uh, have gotten into podcasting in a big way. Conan tends to pop his peas every time he says podcast. 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 This makes the engineer crazy. Oprah, Dr. Phil. The hardest part is choosing where to start. That's today's lesson in podcast 101 on The Lowdown. So if you haven't been paying attention to podcasts, welcome back to Speak On Stage. Not a podcast, but it is a TV show. And it will be turning into a podcast at some point in the future. Because think about this as a way that you create your brand. If you do a TV show, then you can take the audio and turn that into a podcast. Then you can take the podcast audio and transcribe it and turn it into a blog. And then you can take the blog and the video and all the rest of it and chop it all up into little bits and use them as social media posts. So if you start the day or start the week with the show, then you're able to use that all the way through the rest of the week or through the rest of the day if you're really frantic to create really strong content that's all about your brand. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? I hate it when people say that, so I will never say that again. So it's about making your money, it's about making you successful, and about positioning your brand so you've got lots of different options. Next up, we're going to be looking at some of the best podcasts of the year 2020, and a lot of people paid more attention to podcasts during 2020, because with lockdown and quarantine, then it became a perfect way to reach out and connect with people. Now, I used to work in radio for many, many years, and I stopped working in radio because, to be honest with you, I just got sick to death of talking about things that had no interest to me, maybe had interest to other people, and people said to me, uh, Dave, why would you leave radio? You're quite famous, people recognize you, you never have to queue anywhere, you get to meet all these really famous stars, and uh, you know, you've know you really done well. And I'm like, yeah, but it's empty, it doesn't mean anything to me anymore. And I was a station manager, and I worked for the BBC, and I did lots of different things. And I think now, the ability to be your own broadcaster on your own terms, and do your own show like I do now, is something that really interests me, which never, ever, 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 ever really happened after I just became disillusioned with what radio is about. Because in many ways, in many, oh, he said, put his teeth back in, and in many ways, uh, radio became too commercial, and so you'd lose the soul of the show. And you had a lot of people in it who were donkeys, and so I kind of didn't want to do it anymore. I'd much prefer to talk to you about how you can improve your life, or you become an industry icon, or you can get your own brand to a really high level and talk to you about the latest sale in a supermarket or a shopping mall that I really don't care about. So that's why I stopped doing it. And did I miss it? Not really. Did I miss the fame and the glory? A little bit, because it's kind of nice to jump the queue and always get a good seat in a restaurant, but it wasn't worth selling my soul and not feeling like rock and roll. Does that make sense to you? Do you like the integrity? Do you see what I did then? You think I'm lying, don't you? Okay, let's look at the best podcasts of 2020. In case, in case you didn't know, it's Speak On Stage.
So there we go, a look at a couple of the best podcasts. And if you're thinking there's no money in podcasting, let me tell you that Joe Rogan, who's not only a brilliant comedian, but also a super talent uh, in the world of podcasting. And you might have seen him uh, as a stand-up comedian. You might have seen him on Fear Factor many years ago, or being the voice of MMA, uh, mixed martial arts and uh, UFC and so on. Um, I believe he got bought to... He's, he's got a podcast he's been doing for a number of years. Now, this one has been going for about 12 years, so it's obviously going to be a big one um, because he's famous anyway, uh, and he's brilliant at what he does. And the podcast generally go on for about two and a half hours, three hours, with an amazing guests. He does them daily or several daily. Um, and he has 180 million downloads a month. I'll say that again. 180 million downloads a month. How does that make you feel? So that's a lot of downloads. Is that worth money to anybody? Well, let me tell you that I think it was Spotify. It might have been serious. I think it was Spotify. They end up deciding to pay him $100 million to just join their network because they can see just how powerful it was as a brand, as a show. And uh, the thing is, on the show, he's not particularly funny funny. He's not comedian funny, but he's a really smart guy. And he's got some incredible stuff. So if you're thinking, well, I'm not very funny, I'm not really talented, I haven't got a lot to share, let me be the judge of that. I'll let your audience be the judge of that. If you've got a niche that you love and you're really enthusiastic about it, that is still worth money to people. So let's go down and let's talk now and find out from a podcast host what they look for from a guest on Speak On Stage. Do you know what really annoys me as a podcast host? Getting pictures from people who've clearly never even listened to my show. It's like you want to get in front of my audience, the audience that I've worked really hard to grow, but you can't even be bothered to listen to the podcast or even just flick through the back episodes. Most podcast hosts I know have exactly the same complaint. The good news is that doing your research, so just listening to the show or even scrolling through the back episodes, puts you streets ahead of most people who are doing the pitching. So here's 10 more tips to help you pitch yourself as a podcast guest. Number one, it's not about you. I get so many pitches from people telling me how brilliant they are and how good it would be for them to be on my show. But as a podcast host, what I'm really interested in is great content for my audience, content that my audience is going to love. So that is what you need to pitch. Number two, label the subject header of your pitch email. Most podcast hosts are actively looking for guests for their show. So if you label the subject header of your email, they're much more likely to pay attention. Number three, pitch a specific idea for the show and do it in your subject header. Most podcast pitches I get say something like, if you're doing something on social media, I can help. Not very helpful, right? As a podcast host, I want people to pitch ideas that are really great for my audience, specific show ideas, things I haven't covered before. So if you can do that, and you can do it in your subject header, I'm much more likely to say yes to you. But don't try to be clever with words. If you take my pet subject, getting featured in the press, as an example, it would be really tempting to pitch something like making the news or making the headlines, but that won't mean anything to a busy podcast host. So if you're offering to give an interview on how to get press coverage, that's exactly what you should say in your subject header. Number four, keep your introduction brief. If you're pitching cold, then it's a good idea to introduce yourself. But don't spend too long on this, otherwise you could lose the podcast host's attention before you've even got started. Number five, show that you've actually listened to the podcast. So it's a good idea to show that you've listened to the podcast, perhaps mention a recent episode that you really enjoyed in your pitch. Number six, show that you can add value to their audience. The more specific you can be about the content that you're going to cover and how it could help their audience, the more likely you'll be to get a yes. Number seven, show how you can help them grow their audience. If you want to increase your chances of getting a yes, then you need to show the podcast host how you can help them grow their audience, how you're gonna help get that content in front of more people. So sharing stats about your social media followers, your email list, your influence, that can all be really useful. If you're just starting out and you don't have an audience yet, then don't let that hold you back from pitching yourself as a podcast guest. Just really focus on adding value with the content. 
Number eight, show that other people value your content. If you've been a podcast guest on another show or you've written some guest content, then do mention that in your pitch because that will reassure the podcast host that you really know what you're talking about. Number nine, make it as easy as possible for them to say yes to you. For most podcast hosts, the interview is the enjoyable bit. What we don't enjoy quite so much is chasing you up for your photo, for your website address, for your social media handles. So if you can provide that in your pitch email, then you're saving them a job and they're much more likely to say yes to you. Number 10, don't forget to follow up. Spending half an hour on a podcast interview with someone you really admire or would like to build a relationship with is a really valuable thing. So when the podcast episode comes out, don't forget to follow up with them and say thanks. And also make sure you share it across all of your social media networks. That's all for today. But if you want more tips on how to promote yourself in the media, you may want to get hold of a copy of my book. Your press release is breaking my heart. So there we go. Oh, my head's been hidden and I'm hiding behind my phone and I pressed the wrong buttons and I feel like an idiot now. Hold on, where are we? Uh, there we go. That's what I wanted to share with you. Hi, my name is Dave Crane. Welcome back. And some really good tips there about how to get booked on shows. I'm going to be talking about them a little bit more and uh, more stuff. But right now, how to be a great podcast guest when you get on a show. A couple of tips here, and you can find them all at rss.com. And uh, I, I went through, I started skimming through about the things you need to think about. Already, you need to know about the show that, they, that you're wanting to go on. If you say, can I go on your podcast? And they say, yeah, what do you like about it? I don't know, I've never listened to it. I just want to go on your podcast. The odds are it'll be an uh-uh and not a... <laughs> So you need to make sure that you let them know because the ultimate relationship builder is that they connect with you and you get their fans following you and your fans start following them and everybody wins. I've seen some incredible collaborations with some people like Kevin Smith, who's one of my first podcasts at the Smudcast Network. He's got this incredible network of different shows that are on there with all sorts of stars on it and his friends. And some of those shows turned into TV. And one of the ones I love more than anything is uh, Kev's, Kevin Smith, not Kevin Smith, um, Ricky Gervais. He had a brilliant podcast that used to be on the radio. And then it became the world's most popular downloaded podcast years ago. Uh, and then he started selling it for a, a pound a podcast. I think it was, to subscribe to it. I made a small fortune out of it. So if there's ways of monetizing it, but there's also ways of just having fun. Or you can do it as a way of promoting your business, not making any money, but seeing it as part of your marketing and enjoying it as you connect with people um, who could be sponsors or connectors or would also be able to raise the uh, elevation of the quality of your brand. So therefore, uh, you can connect with other podcast people. So let's go through it and let's look at a couple of tips that I think would be really useful. So as I mentioned before, be a fan or at least pretend to be a fan. Let people know that you love their show and tell them some bits about it that are already that you like about it. If you don't know, then pay attention by listening to it once or twice or seeing what's talked about. Because some of the podcasts are massive with really big audiences. Some of them are just starting off or a little bit more difficult to be able to uh, pin down. But they're all good. You never know who's there, who's listening, paying attention, that might want to do business with you afterwards. So make sure you do. All right. Pay attention to the consistent segments and structure. So if you're going to be on somebody's show, then you need to know what the segments are to be able to go on. If they have a, a thing where they say, ask questions to my guest, or they do the latest news, or they say, um, bring in your favorite book, then these are the things that you need to be able to know that you've got. Now, in most cases, you won't be going anywhere. you just be literally, like I am right now, at home with your microphone, like this one here. Can you see a microphone there? That's my microphone. Um, and you've got your headphones if you wear them. I don't. I just kind of guess what I'm sounding like, and sometimes uh, I forget to press buttons and I sound terrible, and sometimes I do have the buttons playing and I still sound terrible. So know the show that you're going to be actually, actually appearing on because that way you can be more effective for the person that you need to do. Uh, learn about the fans. Um, I hate the term fans. It's more like friends and followers, to be honest with you. Because uh, who wants to be a fan of anybody else? It makes it feel like they are bigger and better than you. But not, they're just doing a show. And you've got, a, you've got your own job as well. So everyone's equal, but you just do different stuff. In my opinion. 
So um, learning about the audience is what I would say, because ultimately if you're pitching to go on a, a show or you're on a show where you're talking about an audience that likes finances, then don't just talk about going out and having a party because some will like it, but many of them want to know about finances. That's why I pay attention to the podcast. If you're so far off in the way that you talk to that person, that if it's a pre-recorded one, they might never allow you to be on the show. They might never broadcast it because it's so far away from what their audience likes. So their audience might steer away and not watch it anymore or listen to it anymore. But if you are on point and you know what the fans want to know and you've got some real good tips and ideas, that's perfect. Uh, and you'll get back again. Okay, engaging with the host is really important. Make sure you've got a great relationship with them. If you do get on with them, they will like you and they'll recommend you to other people in the podcast community and they'll get back again and they'll let you plug your stuff when it all comes up. Um, as mentioned there, make sure you know the host's name and say it as often as you can do. They feel flattered when you do it. If you don't know the host's name, then write it down, but not in front of them. And do not say on the middle of a show, uh, what's your name? Because I can never remember uh, because the odds are they'll never bring you back again because you just embarrass them to their own audience. All right, checking your equipment. Remember, this is you on your equipment going through the internet, Zoom, whatever it is you're using, Teams or Meets or some other platform to them wherever they are. So you need to make that sure that the signal that comes from your end is as strong as possible. So make sure that you, your system is primed, the Wi-Fi is good, or there's a cable connection, and make sure your microphone's good, might need a battery in it or something like that. Whatever you're doing, you need to make sure that no problems come from your end, because if that's a regular thing, then people just blacklist you and say, oh, what a nightmare. Did you have to wait an hour for them to come on? Yeah, you had to go and get something, you had to get a new plug or a fuse. Don't do it. Make sure you're good to go as soon as you go on. Number, I don't even know what number. Next number is this, don't ramble. Don't talk too much about rubbish. That doesn't have relevance for the audience or the, the actual podcast host. I say podcast, it could be TV host. Um, if you're just talking about me, 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 and talking about you, yeah, it's fascinating for you. And if you are Justin Bieber or you are, I don't know, Brad Pitt, then we want to know inside your house and inside your lives. But for an average person, nobody cares. Anyone is just thinking one thing, which is what's in it for me. If I pay attention to your story, what do I get out of it? And if it's really relevant, you need to make sure that's true. Okay, be prepared to promote yourself. Nothing wrong with that. You're expected to tell people about your show, about how they can get hold of you, put together a special landing page for people to go to, like with the Toilet Paper Diaries. I need to make sure I show you that at some point. Uh, and then people can go there and find out more about you. And about me page, worst case scenario, connect with me on LinkedIn, connect with me on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, wherever it is. But it looks more professional. I'm more likely to convince people if they go to your page. So, for instance, my page is bookdavecrane.com. I'll be going to speak on stage, have a look at me, see who I am and what I do, and then we never have to ask me that question again. So you're going to do that as well. Not yet. Stay here until I've finished. Okay? And uh, the next one is give back. Make sure that you always promote the show everywhere you go and do it wherever you are. So on social media, say, I was on this show. It's really good. You should meet the host. They're fantastic. Got lots of great guests. Keep churning it around. It's part of the ecosystem. If you do, do not do that and you keep taking, then people don't want to work with you. And also, if you can recommend some great guests to any show, they'll probably say yes. So you grow brownie points with your connections. And also, the person that just interviewed you will is more likely to bring you back again or think favorably of you when something else happens. Okay, I should have uh, got rid of my, um, uh, my notifications for WhatsApp, shouldn't I? I love all the yeah. Okay, and next up, if you're looking for extra help, there's lots of places to do it. There are actually a ton of sites like Matchmaker um, .fm, I think it is, uh, Matchmaker .fm .com, I think it is, uh, where you can actually go along and and sell your wares and say, I'm looking for being a guest on on podcasts. Um, and so people who have a podcast go and have a look at these. I mean, look at your profile and contact you directly if they and send you a message if they want to connect with you. It's very useful as a way of getting out there. I would always recommend that this is a new media. It's nice to be in television. It's nice to be on radio. It's nice to be in magazines and newspapers. But you don't have to be because the people who you're looking for, the odds are they're going to be looking at social media or at least cross-reference so, so, social media to find out who the biggest and best people are that they can connect with and do business with. So I would really urge, as a cost-effective way of moving your way forward, get on as a podcast guest on a TV show, or at least make sure you're interviewed by somebody, and that will carry weight for you in the future. Does that make sense? Good. Let's look at the cheat sheets next on Speak on Stage.
Wow, that's a lot of work. Do I look like I'm all exhausted? I know. It's quite hot in here, actually, because uh, the air conditioning um, was turned off. Because normally I freeze in this room. Mm. Excuse me. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Well, it's not screen tea, so it's... But it's good for you. Makes you regular. All right. So let's look at uh, how to be a talk show guest and the things you should really be considering when you start positioning yourself and asking for that. Now, we're going to start off with very basics because I think if you don't do the basics, then you're going to end up with a gap that you have to fill. Now, if you want to know how to do this properly, the Industry Icon program is full of all these different tips and tools and techniques uh, to be able to position yourself really well. But here's how you do it in a nuts and bolts way. You might want to make some notes as we go along with this. Number one, build your brand and collect relevant footage. Now, you might have seen all the way through my shows, I share with you videos of things I've done or compilations of things I've done. Easy to brand once you've got that kind of content. I'm not expecting everybody to do all these gigs and suddenly be able to turn around and say, right, look at mine. But you should start thinking about creating your brand and getting the right content to make sure that people do to gravitate towards you and see you as a really valid person. So it's kind of important to start doing this. Collect footage from everywhere you go. So everywhere you do stuff um, that's of, um, of no worth, then get somebody to hold your camera and just video you doing it. You can add it all together. And it's amazing how well um, a simple video, two, three seconds of it, can be cut into a much bigger promo that makes you look like a superstar and a legend. Not that you're not already, of course you are, but it just makes sure that other people see it as well. All right, so number three, number two, sorry, uh, thinking what's in it for them from the beginning of a process. What's in it for them on behalf of the audience? What do the audience get out of it? And what does the um, actual show host get out of their relationship with you? If you do not pay attention, you will lose one of them. And if you lose one of them, you might as well not broadcast. Nobody wants to see a bank manager, for instance, who's just talking to you about finances. You'd be like, please kill me. I don't want that at home. Or nobody wants to turn around to anybody who's the, talking about the wrong kind of subject. So you want to think about who's the audience and what do they want. No offense to bank managers. Well, a little bit. All right, number three, subscribe to existing podcasts and, cons con and research and compile a wish list. Stay within your niche. If you do cake baking and you're going to be talking to people who do mountain climbing, the odds are they're going to talk about how many cakes have you wasted on a mountain. You say none. I, I, I climb with gloves and, and those things. I don't use cake because you're going to fall down a mountain. So make sure it's all very relevant and more relevant than that joke was. Number three, we've already got subscribe to existing podcasts and research and compile a wish list. You can get them everywhere. You can find from people who you know that have got a podcast who they listen to and they would recommend. But it is a pecking order. You never go straight onto a Joe Rogan show. You have to prove yourself to be a, a quantity uh, and to be very effective, but you will get some kind of shows. And sometimes you have to babysit the whole process because you know more about what they're doing than they do. Just saying. Okay. Uh, number four, sign up for podcast style websites. I already mentioned about Matchmaker FM. Um, dot com or it might be dot fm um, but there's a number of different sites that have things going on where you can you can put down your pitch this is what i want to talk about this is how long i normally do and they'll either pay you or they'll turn around and say right well we'd have it for free on this show if you want and because most people are paying attention to podcasts of some description news podcasts art podcasts fun podcasts then it's worthwhile being in that industry even if you're just dipping your toes into the water um, so with that, number five is this. Prioritize past successes, social proof, and bragging rights. What does that mean? Well, make sure that you've got lots of evidence that you are who you say you are, not just your passport, but the things that you've achieved. Get testimonials from people you've worked with. Get them straight away if you can do, because you'll catch them when they, they, they feel good about you. Whereas later on, you get buyer's remorse, maybe, where they've just got too many other things to do. And say, yeah, I'll get back to you. I'm going to send it. So make sure you work on your personal brand. You work on the way that people can find you. And when they do find you, they'll go, wow, I want to do business with this person. So your personal brand is everything in that, just in case you were you were wondering how that worked out. Okay, um, so your bragging rights and, and uh, bragging rights are actually important. If you've done something good and you don't tell anybody you've done good, then nobody will know it was you. True? So if you worked with superstars, let people know that you work with superstars. That's the best way to get other superstars to say, yeah, I work with this person. They quite clearly know how to handle me. Because that's a big fear for many people, is that they go out and start doing some th things that make a fool of themselves, and people turn around and just dismiss them in the future. Protect that and nurture your your um, your guests or your your 
podcasts that you go on so they feel good about having you around. Number six, create a great speaker media kit and a one sheet and circulate that everywhere. That will go through with more depth as a future show. If you go to bookdavecrane.com, then you should be able to find a version of that. Let me just see if I can get this to happen live on here. I probably shouldn't because then I'll end up showing you all the different videos that I've got lined up on this site. Can we get it there? No, it's not playing ball. In fact, it's playing a completely different game called Dave, we're not going to talk to you at all. All right, so let's not do it that way. Let's do it a completely different way, which is to ignore that. Well, if you go to um, bookdavecrane.com, you can see my own personal um, um, website for promotions, and you want to emulate it by doing your own version of something as powerful as that. Okay, so getting on the list, reach out to stars and leave a trail of breadcrumbs. Here's one of the things that you should really do now, and why are reasons you should do it now, is because so many people who are superstars and legends and famous people are not doing anything. We've got no shows lined up because you can't do social distancing at the level, certainly in America, they would, they would enjoy. So you really need to make sure that when you're thinking about it, you can go as high as you want up the food chain, but you've got to be polite in how you ask. But people sat at home, big stars, movie, TV, uh, radio, possibly anything that's communications. There's a lot of people who are now available and are not available when things get busier and they do get busier. So make sure that you get onto them now and they'll be flattered and they'll remember your name when new money comes in and stuff. All right then, um, number seven, we've got that leaving a trail of breadcrumbs to who you are so people can find you. Number eight is this, build your personality as a specific potential guest. So make sure that people know your niche and what it is that you do and how much fun you are. That means putting out posts of you speaking, putting out articles of, that people can read and anything that really positions you so they know exactly who you are. Um, they want you to be a guru or an industry expert or something. Even if you don't call yourself that, you may have such a big impact on people that they will follow you afterwards. And you've got to have that in your head. That's what I want to get as a result of doing this. Even though it seems egotistical, why not? It's an egotistical industry. Number nine, what do you stand for? How best can we use you? We heard earlier about having a cheat sheet that you send through in advance and saying, look, I can talk on these subjects, that subject. I'm really into this. This is a real problem for me. And what is it that you want? And then tailor the thing together. Don't just go, this is what I do, and expect them to go wow, because if they don't go wow, what else are you going to give them? See, nothing. So there we go. And um, number 10, share new interviews as they happen. Even if, when you're going out live, if you can put it out live as well, let your people know it's going to be out live. If you can't do that, then maybe you need to do some footage um, around what it is you're going to be doing, send it as a promo to them in advance and use it to drive people to see the show with anticipation for when it's coming next. Does that make sense to you? Yes or yes? I promised I wouldn't say yes or yes, but I already said it one more time in this show. So no or no sounds just as bad. So yes or no sounds like kiddies. So I'll just go blur. So if you want to know, then blur. There we go, I mentioned earlier about the industry icon program, dead simple, all you do to get your freebie, your ability to test yourself and see how effective you are as an industry icon, is go to this page on speakonstage.com, have a look at that button, the gold one, press that, very simple, just move your button with your finger or your mouse, you press it and it takes you through to a brand new page. That page allows you, when you scroll down, to watch videos all about the industry icon program and press that green button there which says, uh, take the free survey. When you press on that button like this, beep, then it means that you get access to a, a 20 question survey. You can answer everything and the results are the results are sent to you. So you get an email, but at the same time, it helps you understand what you need to do to grow your brand from where you are right now to being something that effectively people want to pay for. Does that make sense? Yes, good. Right on the money. Um, and so that's pretty much what you're going to do. If you go to there, then you'll find out. And when you become an industry icon, if you decide to work with me, then there's a Calendly link that arrives for 10 or 15 minutes. And I'll have a chat with you. And we'll go through how you can start your podcast, start your TV show, uh, create a book, create content. Um, there's a load of different things that most people don't know how to do, or it takes them a lifetime to get there. I've done a ton of them already, uh, and I'll share with you exactly how I did them. And we'll make sure that everything happens as you want it. That's exciting, isn't it? Yes, Dave. Thank you so much. And uh, for instance, when I start working with people individually, here's a little sneaky peek at the roadmap. 
now creating lots of different mo roadmaps for people to move forward with their own scheduling. And here's some of the things that people need to do across the key business disciplines. Number two, social media, followers, fans, and subscribers. Um, all these different things here are all the different areas that you need to be dominating in order to see yourself as a brand. I won't spend too long on this, but I just wanted to show you that it does exist. I'm not making up everything as I go. Love your thoughts, love your comments, it's speak on stage. Wow, what a show. Very exciting. I hope you enjoyed it. It's your first taste if you're thinking about becoming a bet uh, um a, a pod show co a pod show co-host or a podcast guest. That had problems with my teeth not coming in properly. So if you want to know how to do that, this is the show for you. Rewind it, go back for all the bits that you missed. Um, but we will be talking about how to be a co-host and we'll be talking about how to host your own show and how to put together a podcast or a TV web show. Um, that's very effective. I really do think for most people, you should be considering it because it's a really good way to get people to love you, to like you. And once you get good at it, it's easy to find them or even better, they find you. Right, it's come to the end of the show. Hope you enjoyed it. It's about time for me to turn around and share with you uh, a really groovy video. This one's all about what you do when people don't like what you do and they give you a really hard time and say you're not good enough. And it's called Haters and Trolls. It's been an honor having you with me, and I hope you look after yourself until I catch you on the next episode. Love you, bye. <laughs>I'm Dave Crane. Let's talk about haters and trolls. If you want to be loved like you were at school, very simply don't do anything with your life. Sit there quietly, don't interfere, and let the whole world pass you by. But here's a challenge. The world's not going to pass you by because the world is going to move around you and leave you exactly where you were standing or where you were sitting. You have to move, you have to break some eggs to make an omelette, and you have to make a decision on what is your brand going to be. Will it be validated? Will you be loved? Will you get haters? Will you get trolls? You can get all the above. And when you start your business for yourself or for somebody else, it's gonna take twice as long to get what you want and cost twice as much as you predict. There'll be some who like you, there'll be some who hate you, but the truth is none of that matters. All that really matters is what you think of you. You start moving, you start making a decision, and you start thinking, oh no, people are criticizing you. And the whole thing is, we got taught from a very early age to deal with people's criticism by thinking it's really valid, but it's not. It only matters if you can use it and turn your business into a more successful way to look after yourself, your friends, your family, your holidays, the people that you truly care about. Everything else is just other people's opinion. And someone decided it was a good idea to tell you how to be small. F those people. Be as big as you can be, as big as you want to be, because it's none of their darn business. You're never going to get everybody to like you. At school you didn't. But here's the thing, 50% of the person you are was probably formed in the school playground and not in the educational forum where you studied and worked really hard to get your exams. Your ability to get on with people, your ability to learn to learn, to network, to sell, to create relationships is what's creating the you right now. Think about your fame, think about your connections, think about your brand, think about some of the biggest names in the world. It doesn't matter how popular you are, there's always someone, somewhere, who hates your guts, who hates the way you talk, hates the way you walk, and hates the fact that you breathe. F them as well. You get paid for two things. The effect of a job you do and how cheaply you can get replaced by somebody else. If you want to be found, you've got to create a brand. If you want to get paid, you've got to start going out on a limb as an artist and creating stuff that nobody else is creating in the market. And if you want to be loved, get a dog. You get one go at this life, get off your ass, go out, break some eggs, Make the best omelette possible. Want more help? I'll be out there with you. That's my guarantee to you.